my name is Erica Cottrell, and this project is, the poster is called Understanding um, Safety Events in the Pre-Hospital Emergency Care of Children. It's part of a larger R01 funded by NIH, and the principal investigator on the project is Dr. Jean-Marie Geese, and the team is really interdisciplinary. It's a um, really neat team of investigators working on the project. And what our overall research objective was, was to really just kind of understand the nature of safety events in this context and the contributors to those. Um, understanding safety is a really, understanding safety events is really important in improving quality for emergency services for kids, and we really don't know a lot about this yet. There's a lot of information about sort of safety events in the hospital context, but in the pre-hospital context, there's a lack of information, especially with regard to kids. So what we did in this phase of the project, this is phase one of a larger NIH R01, and um, I worked with the team and this part of the project to do to conduct focus groups among emergency medical services personnel uh, in five locations throughout Oregon in rural and urban settings. Um, the focus groups consisted of EMTs and paramedics and there was one with emergency room doctors uh, and we asked them a range of questions. They were fairly open-ended but we wanted to just get an idea from them, the people on the front lines, what are the what are the types of safety events you occur, that occur in the pre-hospital care of children because that's something we don't even know yet. Um, what contributes to them? Are there sort of communication issues? Are there technical issues? So we, we talked about these things with this group of people. And I'll just say too, in case you're not familiar, the pre-hospital context, what we're talking about is from the time that the first responders would arrive at the scene and then throughout the time that they transport them to the hospital. So that's kind of what we're looking at there. Um, so we found some really interesting results. Um, overall, I'll just say that there's a range of factors that contribute to this, and what we did with our results is tried to put them into a framework, this ecological framework, um, to show that there are, there are factors that contribute to safety events at the individual EMS provider level and at the level of the family and child, because with kids, we're not just looking at the individual patient, but the family really plays a big role. Then there were um, factors at the team level, sort of communication with other team members, and as well as factors at the system level, um, the EMS system level. And there are also environmental factors that we can't do anything about, but what we're really trying to look at is the factors that we can modify and that are important to understand better. So some of the key findings were that the EMS providers had really a little experience working with kids. Um, these kind of calls with kids don't come along very often, so they don't have a lot of hands-on experience, nor is this really addressed in much of their training. Um, and so it, there, it would bring up a lot of anxiety when a call with a kid came along, both because of lack of experience and they just feel like there's these high stakes with children. Um, you have to deal with the family as well as the child, and sometimes that can be challenging as well to try to figure out how to communicate with a number of different people. And often the child themselves can't communicate directly with you. Um, and more, and, and in addition, technically, there are there are not sort of standardized medication dosages for kids. This is something that they all brought up. So when you're in an emergency situation and you need to administer medication, you're going to have to be looking through a book or something to try to figure out what medication dosage you should give to this child. So that could predispose to error in a, in a really stressful situation. Um, and finally, another, th another one of the highlights that came out is that there wasn't a lot of communication back from the emergency department to the EMS personnel, so they don't often know what happens with the case. They don't know if they really if they, if they made an error that had an impact or if it didn't. Um, so there, there's really an inability to learn from their mistakes or their successes because there's not that communication channel. Uh, and finally, there was sort of a culture among EMS personnel to not report your errors. So you, you just kind of keep those underneath. Uh, you, you, you don't report your, your partner's errors and you don't report your errors. So um, ultimately what these results will do, they're going to inform a Delphi survey, which will be a survey that will go out nationally to EMS leaders to sort of come to consensus on what are some of the key indicators um, for, safety, for measuring safety events in pre-hospital emergency care for kids. And the ultimate goal is to develop reliable and valid safety and quality indicators. And ultimately our hope is that that will lead to improvements in the quality and safety of, of care and um, improvements in training and improvements in systems and, um, and, and, and some of the technical aspects such as equipment size and medication dosage. So yeah, that's it.